All right, today I'm going to be updating my care guide for Black Widow Spiderlings. So I've been keeping and breeding Black Widows for a few years now, and in that time I think I've came up with a, a pretty good method that I like to use to, to care for the babies that makes it somewhat easier. Um, I get a lot of questions about how I do this, so I figured just making one video so I can send it out would help. So this part, I'm going to go over how I go about feeding and housing uh, my slings. So for housing, I have them in just dollar store uh, vial containers inside of Walmart, Mainstays brand, uh, the little three drawers, the smaller size. Um, each one of these holds, let's see, what is it? About 20, I think, each 20 little vials. So it makes it kind of easy that I can just pull, I can take a whole thing out of my, my spider room, take a whole drawer system and feed 60 slings um, pretty quickly and then go grab the next one and just go through it like that. So as far as housing goes, I've got the, the dollar store vials. These come in packs of, if it is six that you get for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. Uh, they work really well. Poke some holes in the top, a bit of toilet paper on the bottom, uh, the pipe cleaner in there. I've ended up doing away with that in the 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 newer ones. I just used the crumpled up toilet paper and they seem to do just fine in that. So that's as far as storage and, and housing goes. Um, let me show you now how I go about feeding. So this is a fruit fly culture and these are just wild fruit flies that I... Uh, I set up the food and caught in my house. So these are completely flight, uh, flying fruit flies. They're not flightless or anything like that. I would highly recommend getting flightless just so you don't get as many escapees. Um, so, and the way I use, what I use to feed is another Dollar Tree special uh, condiment container. On the top of my fruit fly container, I've poked a, uh, a hole through one of the little vents and just placed a bolt through it to act as a lid. So I'll unscrew the, the top of this, pull out the bolt, and then just stick the container on top of that. And the fruit flies will just naturally move up into the container. So we'll give it a, a, just a minute or so until let's let the fruit flies move up. And then once I have a good in the, in the condiment container, I'll go ahead and start feeding. Okay. I feel like I've probably gotten enough now. So all I'm going to do is slide that over, put the bolt back in, pick it up, put the cap back on the container. Got plenty of, plenty of flies for the babies. Okay. So then all I'll do is just take a drawer at a time. This is super simple to do it this way, I think. So one drawer at a time, pick up a, a vial, pop the lid off of this, just stick my finger over top of it to, to cap it. Okay, pop the lid off the vial, baby's right there, open it up, squeeze a couple fruit flies in, excuse me for hitting it there, and just pop it open. So same thing. And then I just go through and do this with all the, the little vials. It's quick, fast, fairly easy to, to, to feed all the babies this way. And I can feed, I don't know, I think right now I have probably around 300 or so babies. So I can do it in about 20 minutes. I can feed all of my babies, I'd say. 20 to 30 minutes, probably. So, all in all, it makes it manageable to take care of large amounts of babies. So, if you just had a couple, this would be much easier for you. And maybe actually easier methods out there. But if you're going to be breeding them, you're going to end up with a lot of babies. And don't worry about going overboard and putting too many fruit flies in. They won't hurt the spiders at all. And they'll kind of just catch and eat them as they get hungry. So if you put four or five in one, they won't be a big deal. They'll still eat them. Okay. So now that you get the idea, 
on how I feed, we'll switch over and I'll show you how I water them. For as far as watering goes, I use uh, this little 50cc um, with a flat tip needle. So it's not sharp at all. That's just a, just a blunt tipped needle. Uh, I got these off Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Um, so all I do with these, and I don't even pick them up most of the time because the holes are big enough. So I'll just stick it in, just give it a little squeeze in each one. They'll drink out of the, the little toilet paper wads at the bottom. So I'll just go through every day and I'll give every vial just a small squirt. If it's getting condensation on the sides, I'll tend to let it dry out for a little while. But I just, I've kind of figured out that just the right amount of, just a couple of drops in each one is all you really need. Just enough to keep the humidity up and give them something to drink from. So, and this is quick, easy, and I can do all of them fast. So, like I said, I think that's the easiest method I've found as far as feeding and watering, storing and housing all the baby spiderlings. So, now I'm going to show you how I house my Black Widows. So, this right here is a little smaller than what I normally go with. But I found a decent deal off of Amazon for this size container. So, and it's big enough. I mean, it, it'll work. So, these are, they're probably one quart would be my guess. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get these. Um, so, these are just these, I bought a 12 pack of these little canister containers for like food storage, for like flour or whatever in your kitchen. Uh, drilled a hole in the top and put in a, a screen vent and then just some fake plastic plant and a little bit of uh, reptile soil on the bottom. The jungle mix from Zilla is what I use. I just, I like it better than the Coco Choir or any of the other stuff like that. So to drill a hole on the top, I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so what I use is a two and one eighths inch hole saw. Um... And what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through the top of this and then I'll put in one of these um, grommets, which again, I'll put a link to where you can get these grommets. And then this is just window screen that you can buy at any department store. Okay, so I'm going to drill the hole and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. I have my hole cut. Is it centered? No, it's not. Does it matter? Shouldn't. As long as you have a decent rim around it, you'll be fine. So then I'll take one of these. These are um, curtain grommets. So for the people that have like the big heavy sliding curtains that slide along a pole, these are the grommets that go through the fabric. Um, took me forever to figure out what these things were, but eventually I got them. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is cut you off a small square of the window screen. This stuff is cheap and you get enough to do, you know, a billion of these things. So I'm going to cut me out a square of the window screen. So like I said, this was just a big roll of window screen. Going to cut out a square big enough to cover that hole. Don't have to be exact or pretty or anything. It doesn't even have to be a whole square, a, a, a real square. Okay. So got my little square of window screen. I'm going to put it over this side here, the one, the side that has the, the little gaps on it. Just kind of try to center it on there as best you can. Then you take the little plastic ring that came with it. You just got to push that down inside of there. Okay. So there it is. So now it's held in place by that little plastic grommet. I'm going to cut away the excess around the around the rim with scissors. Again, doesn't have to be fancy. This is all gonna be hidden. And now, just so it sits more flush, what I'll do is I'll take um, some little cutters and I'll cut off these two little pegs by the by the holes because they, they're they supposed to kind of grip onto the fabric. And what they'll do is they'll cause it to, to sit a little higher up on the, on the lid and you know I just don't like the look of that I like it to be more flush 
So I'll cut those off and then it's ready to go. So all I do, just stick one side through, put the other side on and then they just snap together. Pretty simple, easy, just make sure it's snapped tight. And there you go. You've got a lid with a nice vented hole in it, plenty of ventilation. So that's your enclosure. So to give you the full, full experience, I'm gonna put a little bit of Zilla Jungle Mix in it. Just about an inch on the bottom, just enough to hold in some humidity whenever I water them and to hold the fake plants in place. And then I bought a whole big bunch of these fake plants. So I'll just pull off one of the fake plant bits, just push it down in there. That gives them something to build their web on. Ideally, you don't want them to build their web on the lid. They're going to. They almost always do it first. Um, then what I'll do is I'll just keep tearing the web down that they build on the top, and eventually they get the idea that they should build down underneath these lips or underneath the plant. And once they're doing that, they're good. You don't have to break their web anymore to, to get to them, to feed them and water them or do anything. Okay, so that's ready to go. That's ready to have a, a spider put in it. And it should be perfect. So again, we can look at this girl here and you can see she's doing quite well. Happy in her little home. Is it the prettiest container ever? No, but I think it works well and it looks good on a shelf. So that's how I house them. Okay, now everybody's favorite part, the feeding. So what I feed is mostly mealworms um, to anything, you know, larger than the first or second instar hatchling spiderlings. Um, so I breed my own mealworms, which I find is really helpful because I have a variety of sizes from um, the full grown guys up here down to the just hatched little bitty babies here to the slightly larger young ones. So this should cover all your bases. The adults, adult widows can eat the the large mealworms is a great size for them. And even the, the newborn hatchlings can technically eat these little tiny guys, but I find that fruit flies are just easier to breed in quantities um, because you have to really search for these little tiny, tiny guys. So uh, yeah, now I'll show you how I actually go about feeding them. Okay, so feeding's pretty simple. So the way I like to do it, and of course there's a, there's a method for everything, is uh, grab the mealworm by the tail end and they'll tend to do that little thrashy bit. So what I'll do is I'll just stick them into the web and let them thrash around and make sure that they get themselves tangled up pretty well. Cause if they draw, if they drop down to the ground, they're going to burrow. And if they burrow in, it takes the spider a long time to find them if they ever do find them. And, uh, yeah. So once they're tangled up, they'll wiggle a little bit and, uh, the spider usually goes within just a couple of seconds and, goes for them. So we'll give her just a second and see how long it takes her here. And there she goes. So she's just going to wrap it up and she'll bite it and she'll feed on that. And that'll be good for uh, about four or five days for her. Um, usually I'll feed my adults once a week, uh, occasionally up to 10 to 15 days in between feeding sometimes because I find when they get really, really big, they uh, they tend to uh, stop eating for a while. But you can usually tell, as long as the abdomen's a decent size. This one's a little scrawny. She laid eggs for me. Um, but uh, yeah, as long as their abdomen's good and plump and they have access to water, they'll be just fine. 